Hi everybody, hello Utrecht. Hey Gil, how's it going? <laughs> and hello How everybody also. And hello everybody. Wow, I missed uh, I missed saying that. That was fun. Yes, <laughs> that was fun. I missed it last time saying it properly. Uh, but now, so uh, if you're listening to this on the on the as depicted of po- uh, as depicted on film podcast, this is also on YouTube. Got Academy. If you're watching this on YouTube then you can go and listen also to the podcast as depicted on film. The links are in the description. Yeah. And Ruth Hale, so in this episode, we want to talk about Rings of Power, mm-hmm. season two, episode four. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the themes that we talked about in the previous, uh, about uh, episodes one through three, now they're still there, still here. Mm. Yeah, the, uh, so the season kicked off with uh, three uh, episodes to binge. And uh, the planes uh, take off in uh, those episodes, and now we're on cruising altitudes. Um, so exactly. there's a bunch of different things that we have to keep up with, uh, with the ensemble cast moving around. It's a little hard for me, um, but uh, I'll do my best. There's uh, lots of stuff happening. And uh, the main themes that you actually mentioned uh, in, in our previous episodes are, uh, are here, right? Let's, uh, let's tick them off. So, rise of fascism. Rise of fascism. Uh, yeah. The environmental disaster, basically. So, the Middle Earth is uh, rising up uh, uh, and causing trouble. Um, one thing that I was very excited about is that uh, for the first time in many decades, a quicksand is back as a threat. <laughs> that used to be a threat on all, t- all TV shows. Now it seemed that way it was actually a slimy monster. Also swamps, them down. swamps are making a comeback. Swamps it's been are back. Yeah. It's been the, a while. It's very like we're old school. The trees are angry yes. in different ways. The so, trees uh, are angry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. tree scene, you know, I'll, I'll give like my opening intro in a moment, but the, the, the tree scene, I was thinking like, if that tree would attack me and I would be like, no, no. I'm vegan. I'm like, oh no, that's like the worst thing that you can do <laughs> <laughs> for the truth. Like, Why wow, you're eating what? plants? Only plants. <laughs> Breaking you into. Uh, okay, so yeah, all of these are all of these elements. Like, yeah, as you said, the rise of fascism. You know how you how you treat uh, foreigners and stuff. We see that also here. Mm-hmm. And what I found interesting, also I mentioned that in the previous video, is that like the show is basically criticizing. Uh, leaders, I guess, and people and populations in different junctions uh, criticizing criticizing their decisions because we know how everything ended up. There is a big, big war to come and they're not going to be able to stop it ahead of time. They will have to fight all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. So nothing that they're they're doing now is going to work. We know this, Mm -hmm. right? So this is a very, very interesting perspective and and, and, uh, and I mentioned this last time, like the show doesn't explicitly tell us what they should have done at every step of the way. And it's, it frankly doesn't seem as if they have too many options like, like in the moment. Mm-hmm. So maybe the show is telling us that the missing ingredient is in fact the perspective. Mm-hmm. Just like when you have a farther, a bigger, a wider perspective, if you can get there, if you could do that when you're real time, for example, study history and historical and cultural processes and how you avert disaster, how people have averted disaster or how they could have averted it and didn't. Maybe like we're experiencing this and like we know more than, than all of them. But of course, it's like, you know, it's not it's not fair, right? Mm-hmm. They cannot know this much. But maybe that's like the, you know, the missing ingredient to be able to make uh, correct decisions, perspective. Mm-hmm. Although we did see in this episode uh, a, a character that the fandom has long wanted to see, Tom right. Bombadil. Yeah, uh, shout out. Shout out. Uh, I thought it was interesting. I, I, I guess right, the, he has perspective. Yeah, I mean, he's got the benefit of detaching himself uh, right. from all the proceedings and uh, I think they did a pretty good job I mean he's such a tricky character yeah. right because like in the books I mean Tolkien I'm not sure if he actually did but it, it would be quite likely that he would he would say well Tom Bombadil is very gay uh, but not in the current way but you know cheerful oh, okay. and singing and yeah. everything yeah 
and that's hard to make him look cool and powerful at the same time with uh, the singing but yeah. they they had some displays of his power and i think that worked really well yeah um, yeah yeah they so. did very well he had good energy the actor it worked well i mm-hmm. thought mm-hmm. yeah so he's like uh, uh, adam right he's yes. the first the first man the he first was there person. all along he saw everything he was there all along yeah mm-hmm. that was nice yeah. that's a nice concept like being there before the stars even mm-hmm. <laughs> What, right, so he has like a perspective. Ah, okay, so maybe it's not uh, an accident that he's here and he's mentioning the perspective, and that's why he's not acting in the moment. He's like, he's a perspective person, and not, uh, you know, let's now do A, B, and C to change something right now. Because so maybe the downside of perspective is that it could make you like. N- inactive a little bit because uh, everything is like the you know the winds of time what can i do mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well i used to the luxury of being very powerful as well and you can kind of see yeah. with the other characters that if you don't have the benefit of hindsight then the dual usage of these rings is is appealing right we also see that kind of okay they're not just disasters exactly. they're also useful it seems at least in the moment and um, yeah they don't know what's going to happen so it's a dilemma what right. to do with this with this technology right okay so let's uh, let me circle back to this for the end of the video and we'll talk about where things are going mm-hmm. okay so so one thing that uh, like maybe my like my favorite plot of the of the episode is the one kind of hobbits meeting the other kind of hobbits mm-hmm. none of which are hobbits but it seems that a combination of which will birth the hobbits so this is <laughs> this is evolution okay Okay, cultural evolution. So this is right up uh, your alley. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, there's uh, ethnogenesis is going to happen, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, so there's a little bit of of cultural elements in both of them. Uh, like the Harfoots, I guess, are more migratory, and, and, th- and these guys are more sedentary, um, and uh, some new culture is going to uh, evolve out of this. Right, and uh, and they mentioned the name of their leader, the Harfoot leader. Uh, I don't remember his last name. That was what was important in the episode. But for me, the first name uh, jumped to mind, uh, Tzadok. That's from the Bible, uh, uh, the character of supposedly the first priest of the first temple. So this is supposed to conjure this like ancient uh, feeling of wisdom from a time beyond time, half mythological, half real something like that because this Tzadok fellow uh, people believed that he was real and that had like really real significance uh, political significance in the real world up until you know Roman times Mm -hmm. so it's so it's both like real and then beyond the midst of time so I felt like it really added to the tapestry of this world Mm -hmm. also the story the, the the basic story that they went somewhere and then they forgot over the generations, what they were looking for, <laughs> and they thought, okay, we're just walking, right? This is what we're doing. We're always walking. Mm. <laughs> it's become that ritual, nice. huh? Yeah. Nobody goes off trail. And nobody walks alone. That's right. Nobody goes off trail. And nobody walks. But maybe, actually, my actual like favorite scene of the mm-hmm. episode <laughs> was so funny. When Isildo and his uh, captive slash uh, rescuer slash uh, possible girlfriend because uh, her betrothed is uh, gone, mm-hmm. right when, <laughs> they, when they get to kiss, they get the opportunity to kiss, there's the cock block of the millennia where the actual betrothed just like jumps in out of nowhere and everybody goes, oh, and he, he's oblivious to whatever's going on and just like, Picks her up and wow, that was such a powerful moment. Such a such a powerful <laughs> moment. They built it up really well because you ended up like not really believing that she even had a betrothed, right? That that was just like a part of her cover story. He goes to a different school, you don't know him. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. He's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, there so he is. He's nice. real. <laughs> exactly. You wanna chime in on that or you want to look ahead? Uh, well, looking ahead, I guess uh, we're still uh, focus grouping uh, uh, the name uh, Gandalf, which is slowly taking shape. <laughs> Somebody used another similar sounding word. What we're was that? Gandalf? Gandalf? Grand, 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 Grand Elf. 
Grand, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's coming. Um, right. I guess the other is so there. I guess Saruman. How are we feeling? Is that coming? Is that somebody said in the comments? By the way, uh, shout out and thank you to all, all the nice comments that we got uh, in the last mm. video. Somebody mm. said that uh, the Nazgul's are actually uh, based on uh, evil wizards. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's gonna become uh, a Nazgul, this dark wizard. There mm -hmm. is a dark wizard, right? Mm -hmm. And, I uh, thought they were kings. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm bad at the lore. I thought. Uh, I also thought they were kings. Maybe somebody's wrong here. It could be us. It's likely. not super important. <laughs> likely, yes. Yeah. It's not super important though. Yeah. Okay. So, like looking yeah, ahead, I'm true. thinking. I'm thinking. Uh, so Isildur. I rewatched the, you know, the intro to the first Lord of the Rings movie to make sure, like, what are the details. Mm -hmm. So. Isildur is the son of the king. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. So his dad, who is now just like a captain, is going. He is going to become king, mm -hmm. like in the coming years. And Isildur is going to become his heir. Yeah. And then he, his heir, eventually, two thousand years later, would become Aragorn. Yeah. So Isildur's line becomes important. Now we see he doesn't have anything magical in his blood, and I think he's going to marry this woman so his children are basically going to be unexceptional from uh, either side and Atao followers so that would be kind of uh, nice uh, to like debunk the magical aspect of uh, of this lineage well uh, uh, isn't it with lineages usually that uh, the, the magic is projected onto it uh, afterwards I think exactly. justify why you're there it can't just be normal <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Well, and lineages like that also have to kind of be whitewashed or like fixed. Uh, like, so for example, the, the, the current Dutch House of Orange are supposed to descend from William of Orange, the, the great rebel leader, but they're just a side branch. The, the, yeah. the English royal family had like German names, but that was a little awkward, right. so that was <laughs> changed. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah, got to yeah. fit the national myth, right? Okay. And, okay, this is not important really but um so there's the the crack team of uh high-powered elves and they're a bit like the star trek crew that's been down you already know who yeah. who's the mook who's gonna die and i thought it's a little weird like the the black guy is dragged into the crypt cave or whatever and they're like over it very quickly like okay well, yeah. i guess he's gone <laughs> like uh, i was black I yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the one black guy. What the? I mean, I just Maybe got, I just, just got say. used to. Okay, so, so, uh, I mean, there's a lot of discourse about this, and I think it's kind of fine that, like, with acting, um, acting traditions kind of evolve, right? And right. It, it's been l like this in the past, also that people play roles that they aren't actually even in their gender or race or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that's kind of coming back, but then with the idea of, well, maybe we want some sort of representation. So it, I'm, I'm fine with, okay, there's black elves. This is just part of, of present-day acting. I, I don't care. Yeah. But then to kill that guy. <laughs> maybe they want to show, hey, you know, hey, we're, sometimes... We're we're black not biased in any way. Sometimes black that, people uh, die. So yeah. That, yeah, that's and then, you know, he happened to be someone that nobody liked. So <laughs> did in the morning. The fact that he's black has nothing to do with that. He was just like an unpleasant person. That's uh, actually, that's, that's yeah. even further. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's, yeah. Sorry for the hard cut here. I forgot to mention the thing that I wanted to get back to. I think that by the end of the season, the ring, the elven ring, will end up uh, tempting, seducing, manipulating Elrond. Now he's all out against the ring and against, uh, you know, collaborating with the ring. He will be put in a situation that will make him choose, and he will choose the ring. He will have a good reason. I think this is God. You know, with telling stories, there has to be some moment that sets things in motion and that explains the motivation of the characters right but then 
the story should be about how the characters change by the events. So it should kind of pivot yes. from, from the initial setting in motion to their interactions, how they change. Right. And, and that's, that's where we are now, I guess. Right, exactly. Now we're like in the second act that will last most of the season. What are you doing concretely in the face of the challenge that is now, even though you might not know the entire extent of it, but everybody knows there is a challenge now. It's not a matter of convincing someone to do something now. It's like action time. Let's see how mm. it plays out. So that's where we are in the story. You are right. Mm. Okay. So looking forward to it and we'll do this again uh, next week, right? Yeah, sure. It's fun. So, so thank you everybody for listening and watching. It's called Got Academy on YouTube and as depicted on film on whichever podcasting platform you're using. Mm. And uh, we'll see you all uh, next week. And thank you, uh, members uh, on Patreon. Yeah, nice. Patreon.com slash ADOF. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Cool. Okay. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye.